Now that a number of Republican senators from the Senate Judiciary Committee have tested positive for coronavirus, Democrats could actually have an effective strategy to block the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett into the Supreme Court. Will they be strong or will they be dumb and feckless? One of my prayers is that the Republicans will take back their party. Things keep dripping out, drip, 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 and the truth comes out. So let me give you the details on what's going on. As we know, Donald Trump and a number of White House officials have tested positive for coronavirus. But there are senators who have tested positive as well following Donald Trump's Rose Garden announcement of his nomination of Amy Coney Barrett. And also there was that fundraiser in New Jersey, people aren't wearing masks, they're hanging out, they're spreading the virus. And so the coronavirus cases that could prove most problematic for the GOP's chances of confirming Barrett are a trio of Republican senators. Mike Lee of Utah, Tom Tillis of North Carolina, and Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Lee and Tillis, who both serve on the Judiciary Committee, were at the White House last Saturday and later reported testing positive for the virus. While Johnson said in a statement that he had been exposed to the virus in DC later in the week. Now, let's take a look at what the makeup of the Senate is. As you guys all know, Republicans do have a slim majority in the Senate. They have control of the Senate 53 to 47. But two of their members, Senator Susan Collins of Maine and Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, have said they oppose holding a vote to confirm a Supreme Court justice before the election. The Senate isn't expected to hold a final vote until the end of the month. But were Lee, Tillis, and Johnson to be absent, Republicans wouldn't have the majority to approve her without the support of Collins or Murkowski. Okay, so that's if, that's if she comes out of the Judicial Committee, the Senate Judicial Committee, and they have a floor vote on her confirmation. But it might not even get that far because of the fact that two of these Republicans serve in that committee and are sick. So let me just talk about how this is gonna impact the committee if Democrats play their cards right. So first off, the Senate is taking a two week recess because Mitch McConnell wants everyone to stay away since the virus is spreading. Now the crucial step for Republicans is likely not the hearings, but the committee vote as I mentioned, which requires senators to be physically present to achieve a quorum according to Sarah Binder, an expert on congressional procedure at the Brookings Institution. If Lee and Tillis weren't there, Democrats could boycott the hearing and block the vote. I have more details, but Cenk, do you want to jump in? Yeah, so this is the bare minimum that Democrats could do. So you ask for a quorum call and then you boycott the Judiciary Committee. You need 12 people for quorum in the Judiciary Committee. And now with two Republican senators out, they're only, they, without the Democrats, they only have 10. They cannot make a quorum call. So this is the kind of technical procedures that Republicans would use infinitely to block a Democratic nominee. How do I know that? They already did it. They did technical procedures like this one to block the Supreme Court nominee of Barack Obama for over a year. So now the final vote at the end of that whole process for the full Senate is only a week before the election. So all they gotta do is delay for seven days. So can the Democrats do the bare minimum to get a delay of a week so that we're past the election? Well, it's a 50-50 proposition. <laughs> so I mean, I'm being dead serious. Can Democrats do something incredibly simple? And that is the bare minimum, 50 mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're being generous with 50-50 to be honest. Like I'm so used to being disappointed by the feckless behavior of the Democrats that 50% is too generous. But I will say this, there's still the possibility that even if Democrats play this right and they block Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation before the election, there's still the lame duck session. And the argument that I keep seeing from a political analyst is that, well, I mean, they wouldn't want to move forward with a confirmation during the lame duck session because that's going to reflect poorly on Republicans. Like, I can't believe that that's still 
the type of analysis that people are getting paid to share with the world. Like that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They don't care, they don't care. Clearly they don't care. I mean, Lindsey Graham was on the record twice saying, "Oh, you can hold it against me if I do it. But I, I'm just saying in an election year, we shouldn't vote on a, a Supreme Court nominee, even if it's a Republican like Donald Trump nominating this person in his uh, the final year of his first term. He, he was a hypocrite, no one cares. Sure, it hurt him a little bit in his Senate race. But at the end of the day, they understand power and they're gonna do what's necessary to accumulate power, period. Yeah. So. Um, I, I hear you on that, no question. And I always assumed that they would do it in the lame duck session. Uh, but it looks like now they're about to get landslided. Uh, so the Biden's back up to about a nine point lead nationally. Uh, and the, all the swing states, the advantages to the Democrats. So if they get absolutely obliterated um, and they do it anyway, well, that does create another problem for them because then at that point, It'll be exceedingly clear that the American people did not want them to replace the Supreme Court seat. And if they do it anyway, you know, at some point, the Republican brand gets so badly damaged that, you know, how many elections can they lose? Because those guys care about their own power. Those Republican senators care most about their own power. And so they, if they lose their election they and they're in a lame duck session and they all got obliterated, they might get bitter and go, so what? Or yeah, well, they won't capture the Supreme Court for 30 years, see how you like it. That's very possible. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, the McConnells of the world might say, look, guys, we're down to 47 senators. If we keep going like this, we're gonna be down to 40 and we're not gonna have any power at all. You know, turn around. It would only be it affect if it affected McConnell's own power position. So that's the best that we have. To hope for, and remember, if she's already seated before the election, she could help decide the election by stopping the counting of the votes. So delaying it by a week is so important. So now that they know that that's possible, Tom Cotton went on TV, Republican Senator from Arkansas, and said, "We'll wheel people in to personally vote if they have to." And they do for in order to break a quorum call, you have to vote in person in the Senate. So basically, Cotton is saying. I care so much about getting a pro-life judge in that I'll have people break the quarantine and come in person and potentially kill his fellow senators to yeah. be pro-life. It's sad that Democrats don't have that kind of fight in them. I'm not saying that I would want them to risk people's lives, but we can't get them to do the bare minimum when it comes to representing their constituents. That's point number one. You're right, Anna, about the disproportionate situation we have here in, in Congress. One side's like, uh, should we ask for the thing that we have a right to ask for and then just not show up? I mean, can we? Do as little as not showing up. I don't know. Let's debate it, right? The other side is we will wheel in dying senators and kill off more of your senators to make sure that we grab power. Now that kind of uneven playing field. No wonder the Democrats get mauled, and that is because, as I've told you countless times, the Democrats are paid to lose. The donors fund really strong Republicans for tax cuts and deregulation, and they fund really weak Democrats. So that they could surrender to Republicans under all situations and go, oh, well, there's nothing we could do. So, but you guys know ahead of time now, if the Democrats blow this, it was totally their fault. Republicans do fight for what they want. There's no question. And they'll they'll stop at almost nothing to accomplish whatever their political agenda is. But keep in mind that when it comes to doing what's right for the American people, especially during a pandemic. When you have an 8.4% unemployment rate today, right? The numbers were higher earlier, but it's still incredibly high today. Republican senators aren't getting together and fighting tooth and nail to ensure that there's another round of stimulus. But they will fight. They will risk their own lives in order to vote in favor of confirming a conservative Supreme Court nominee. So just understand where their priorities are, especially when they give you that sweet talk about how they care about the economic situation for Americans. They they don't care. A lot of Donald Trump's um, you know, 
chest thumping today was more about ensuring that the economy and the stock market doesn't take a hit as a result of his own incompetence from contracting coronavirus. Um, they only care about how their actions impact their own pocketbooks, their own power, and their own agenda. When it comes to doing the right thing as public servants, that's what they're supposed to be. They'll never do the right thing. They never do. They've always abandoned the American people, and we're experiencing that right now. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.